like we just got here and now I am leaving. And I believe that is what happened. I want to give thanks to General Superintendent Brother McIndizi and his wife. The Executive and National Board members. Missionary Long and his wife. Associate Missionary Shepherd and his wife. The Associate Shepherd. Missionary Shepherd Long. And I want to thank Sister Sackman for coming as my prayer warrior. And as my armor bearer. She's had to bear a lot with me. So I thank God for her. This morning I have a message entitled. When the mantle settles in place on your shoulders. And before I go into anything, I got to say the statement that is the crux of this conference and every conference this year in the country of Zimbabwe. We must remember objectives are the only thing that changes. The vision never changes. Especially this Easter Sunday morning. When we are remembering the day he arose from the grave and gave us hope for a resurrection. So let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. Again, 1 King, Kings chapter 3. Verses 1 through 15. And as I leave Zimbabwe, I would appreciate your prayers for my body that God would touch it and heal it completely and totally. Because the weekend of the 16th of April, I will be standing in Kenya. And in between that, I'm going to be preaching all over the United States of America. My body is weak. But my God is strong. He has all strength in his hands. So let's read 1 Kings 3.1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built into the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to set on his throne as it is this day. Solomon was so sweet when I went to the interview with David, O Baba, O Musa, O Kulu, Jabo, O Kamba, O Kipam, O Ako, O Kipu, O Ako, O Kinisue, O Kulungen, O Kotwe, O Benfis, O Kuwe, O Amtinela, O Musa, O Kulu, O Kuti, O Kuti, O Amnigera, O Indota, O Efes, O Estalwe, O Sake, O Kosi, O Jenga, O Musa. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made Thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. 
I know not how to go out or to come in. And thy servant is the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Lolo Java, Rabban Lushe, Emeshwen, Emkos, Mukulukulu Solomon, Ubuti Solomon, Utrele Lolo Luto, Mukulukulu was a city boy, and in my Ubuti Utrele Lolo Luto. And verse 13, and I have also given thee that which thou hast asked, not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Njalo uba uza uza hamba elgele ni zami utrina izi miso zami le mila yoyam jengo David uishlo hamba niza wenlu la insu zako. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. U Solomon was a papa. Pastor Mathedizi, if you would pray. Dear Lord Jesus, this morning, we stand before thy sight, Lord. You have prepared a message for us. Lord, open our ears. Open our hearts. We need it, mighty Lord of God, today. Reach out to every one of us. That mighty Lord of God, your name may be glorified. That will walk after the Lord and fulfill the thing that you want us to do, Lord. Father, we thank you. Anoint thy servant. Anoint the lips. Declare it unto us. We thank you right now. For Reverend Smith, right now. Let your presence be upon him right now. <coughs> In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. You see, I was first called to preach at the age of seven. When I was a young child. And then when I was 17, 18, I went to Bible school. And I decided that wasn't the life for me. What you now? So we transgressed 20 or 30 years. You see, life is a journey. We make lots of decisions. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the generation that's in their 20s and 30s 
You did not have the liberty of the time that I had to go to a different route. You've got to do it quick. Because God's going to raise you up quickly. So you've got to know what to ask for when God gives you dreams. When God comes to you in a dream. And you begin to pray. You've got to know what to ask him for. Because he will come to you. As he came to me. But you must use much wisdom. You must ask him for wisdom. Because you will not have the seasoning. Of the gray hair that we have. Of the trials. And the mistakes that we've made. So that when we counsel people, we can truthfully say to them, please don't do that. Let me tell you how that will end. Because I walked that road, I got that t shirt. And I don't want you to have that one. I don't want you to possibly be a trophy on the wall in hell for the devil. You see, those of us that have been raised in the church are a great wealth to God. Are a great riches to God. Riches, wealthy. Because we have not sinned, we have not been raised in the world of sin. I'm not putting down those who have come out from sin. They have a great testimony. But those of us who have been raised in the church and stayed in the church we have a great testimony also. We have the testimony of God keeping us. Of God bringing us through those teenage years. Of God keeping us when we were young. Of God dealing with us when we were children. Of God walking with us through the dark valleys of life of being called to travail at a young age. We have testimonies those new converts that come in won't have. And yes, we need to give the new converts a lot of recognition for coming in out of sin. But this morning God wants me to remind us that our children our children including me I'm one of those who have stayed in we are blessed yes God had to take me from being a whitewashed sepulcher and take me to an altar of cleansing because I got lost for a while in the church and we do get lost for a while in the church we come to church but it's just everyday normal for us we're used to the Holy Ghost falling we don't see this as anything spectacular but when the new converts walk in it's spectacular and there's a verse in the Old Testament and I'll never forget after my husband had died and I had a massive heart attack I was driving to Mississippi to minister. And I got out of the hospital the day before. You see, they were getting ready to fly me to a hospital for open heart surgery. When my pastor in the church prayed online for someone in the hospital. And his wife hadn't told him that I was in the hospital. And God healed my heart. So instead of being loaded on a gurney on a helicopter, I was just shocked. 
And I drove 14 hours. And I crossed the state line from West Virginia to Virginia, Sister Long. And God spoke to me, Pastor McIntyre. And he said to me, God's going to, I'm going to restore the years that the canker worm has ate. That was about 13 or 14 years ago. And since then, it's like I've been on a ride that just keeps going higher. I should not be standing on this platform right now. I have not paid the dues my elders have. Because I chose a different road other than ministry. I stayed in church. But I sat in the back. Because I was afraid to get too close to the fire. Because I knew if I got close to the fire, I would have to walk the anointing and the calling that had been placed on my life at a young age. Many prophecies. His prophetess name. Before I was 13. Many visions and dreams of me going places like this. I'm telling you this. Because you need to go home. And talk to your pastor about your anointing. In order for you to be an apostolic influencer. You need to step into the anointing and the calling that God has given you. And when you step into that anointing and calling fully, you step into that anointing and calling fully, the blessings and miracles and signs and wonders that will follow you will be unspeakable. And they will also be unbelievable to you. I know I've said it many times this week. I still can't believe I'm standing here this year. When I, I was calling him to talk about this summer, Brother Long, and he calls me about this. And I'm like, yeah, I have that hole I can't feel. I didn't feel ready to do something this big. And that's exactly when God will use you to do something like this. Because you're not dependent on yourself. You depend on the anointing and the flow of the Holy Ghost. Because you are truly walking in the flow of the anointing. We have to understand that. When we pray for a service, before we preach, we should pray, God, I want to see people made whole. I want to see them made whole. I don't want to see them go home physically healed. And and not spiritually or emotionally healed. When Jesus prayed for people, they were made whole. Whole. It's time for people to be made whole. In the name of Jesus. It's time for us to realize we have to step in. And I'm not putting down ministry. And us praying for people. Yes, we need to pray for people. But every one of you, under the sound of my voice, have the same Holy Ghost I have if you're filled with it. Which means that you have the same power to pray for people that Jesus did. And they should be made whole. So why aren't we doing it? Again, it's fear. Fear that our leadership will attack us. Fear that if we pray for them, they won't be made whole. 
But we easily pray for people to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And some of them don't get it. So what's the difference? So much do a Lay your hands on their head. Let God do the work. Let God do what he wants to do. Some will be made whole. And some won't. It's unto them as to the level of their faith. We just have to step out and do it. So we have to step out and do it. We have to step out and do it. We have to step out and do it. We have to do it. We have to step out and 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 do it. And when he breaks things to my memory when I'm preaching, it's because someone needs to hear it. I was preaching what's called a big Sunday. And I'm preaching what's called a big Sunday. What's called a big Sunday? Why am I to my head a big Sunday? And my friend Sister Shaw was on that trip with me. Um, um, Ghana, we're going to Sister Shaw. Why am I to my head? And she turned as she was speaking. We have Chibidi Ghana in Kuluma. And she said, Sister Smith. What do you hear, Sister Smith? The Lord wants you to know. That you have the mantle. And she named one of our Pentecostal greats. And I sat there and I said, Would you please be quiet? And I said, Would you please be quiet? Because we don't like things to be called out to us. If you're truly humble, you don't. And I said, Would you please be quiet? If you're truly humble, you don't. If you rise up with pride when someone does that, you have a problem. I wanted to sink into the ground a few times. And because I said that in my mind, she said it three times to make sure I got the picture. And she said, I said it three times to make sure I got the picture. And yeah, I'm being quiet this morning because this is more teaching. And sometimes we need teaching more than we need wild, fiery preaching. Because it needs to be taken into your heart. You see, when the mantle settled on Solomon, as I read last night, he embraced it. He covered himself with the mantle. He was known by everyone to be the wisest man in the world. And that's in the Bible. People sought him out. And you say, but I'm not a king. Well, let's talk to you a minute. Let's read another scripture. And I know we're tired. I'm tired too, but I'm doing what God has asked. Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Is that too much? 15 or 17? It says, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? What said to him, O Lord, that I am the Son? And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The Son of the Living God. Petro, what you will do, Christ, to in your turn, I'm going to put a pin on. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Who just what who was this you were when I see my little John? Who put on a new man? He has a new man. 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 And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then just a few verses later in verse 23 Jesus turns and says to Peter 
Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. In one breath. Peter was, yeah, I'm going to lead the church. And in the next breath, Jesus called him the devil. So tell me why you can't obey God. I told y'all yesterday I'm a nobody from nowhere West Virginia. United States. But God took me on a journey with him. And if you will let God take you on a journey with him, you may become the biggest apostolic influencer the United Pentecostal Church of Zimbabwe has ever seen. Hey, has ever seen. But you've got to be willing to step out. When God laid on my heart to do those daily devotions on Facebook, I called it me just babbling. And then people started getting the Holy Ghost. And then last or two years ago, Facebook made me a public person. And now there are some months that over 70,000 people watch those videos. Tell me God isn't working. I just did it because God said to do it. And you know what God told me when he told me to do it? He told me to do an 8 to 10 minute devotion. But then I had to pray for 8 to 10 minutes in English. Because as a young child I was called to travail. So when I pray I slip into tongues easily. So I never had to think about what to pray or how to pray. Because God would pray through me for the things needed. And then God said to me, the reason you have to pray in English specifically is that my people do not know how to pray. You will teach them through prayer on Facebook. I pray against homosexuality. I pray against child sex trafficking. I pray for our police and our military. I pray for unity. I pray for our children. I thank God for all he's done. I pray for the five-fold ministry. I pray for the sick. By the time I'm done, I think I'll pray for everything but the kitchen sink. You see, because prayer Without prayer, we can't influence anyone. And I'm talking about sincere prayer. Heartfelt prayer. That's what changes things. But we've got to understand in order to influence people to live this way we first have to really live this way and love this way we can't pretend to love it so let's go to Acts 2 37 through 40 now. Let's look at what happened after Jesus died and arose. And the man 
mantle began to settle in place on Peter's shoulders. He was the rock the church was being built on. He was still the one that had been called the devil by his Lord. But that mantle began to settle in place. And I'm sure sometimes it slipped off. Because he was human. As we are all human. When we make mistakes. That doesn't mean we're done. That just means we need to go to an altar. And repent of our sins. And if necessary, go to those in leadership. And fix whatever it is that we did or didn't do. And fix whatever it is that we did or didn't do. We've got to have the right spirit. Peter had a temper. He was the one who cut off the ear. And whenever I preach that scripture, I say, Jesus, better be thankful I wasn't there. If I could have lifted the sword, I wouldn't have took off an ear. I'd have took off the whole head. Because they weren't going to take my Lord in my sight. But you see, God knows who we are. Our personalities are what give us the ability to go and to do and to influence. Because he can use us in ways we never fathomed or imagined. He can use those things that people have said will destroy us. For his glory. So Acts 2.37 says. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then, then Peter said unto them, Repent. Petro, what to give up and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we can't forget Acts 2 and 39. For the promises unto you and to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation Peter Petro, the one they didn't think could do anything Jesus said I've got a mantle just for you it's going to settle in place on your shoulders. You're not just going to be an influencer in your community. You're going to be one that influenced the world for generations to come. The Lord is coming back. We need to accept our mantles today and let them settle in place on our shoulders. For the blessing, will you come here? Brother Blessing will You see, Brother Blessing, God has had me praying for him. And he he is a great man of God. He is a great man of God, a young man. And you still got mistakes to make. But if you'll pray, you'll dig into the word of God. This mantle will be placed on your shoulders. God has called you to greatness if you will obey. If you will obey. If you will submit, God's going to do great things in your life and in your family. I'm sorry, I love him like a son. And God has shown me. 
That's why I embrace him like I do. What about you shares? What will you be like Peter? Or will you be Judas? Judas had the same opportunity. Judas had the same opportunity. That God to Judas made a different decision. Why is this decision And today, what decision are you going to make? Are you going to choose to let the mantle settle in place on your shoulders? Or are you going to choose to tear it off? And to put throw it away at the trash. Because when you go out to the world. Or you go to another church denomination. Or to be like the television evangelist. You just tramped your mantle. You just pulled it in the trash. Let's all stand and say, God has spoken to this congregation this morning. For the blessing, if you will come up here. We are brother Pidib. I want people to come that want a mantle. And as a young man, I want him to lay that on people's shoulders. Because you see, when you accept it, there's an anointing that comes on you. This is not licensure. This is not being licensed as a minister. This is accepting your calling. This is saying, okay, God, I'm not running no more. I'm going to do what you've asked me to do. I'm going to walk the way you want me to walk. I don't care if it's unpopular. I don't care if they make fun of me. I don't care if they make fun of me. To obey you in all things. So the altar's open. Who's ready to accept their mantle? Who's ready to say, I want it? And you just pass it from one to another. And symbolic. But what you're doing is showing God you want. What God has for you. Oh, that you're going to step into it. Fully and wholly. And you're going to step into it. And when you do that, you will fall on you. And you will see that God has been faithful to you. And when you pastors to pray for people, their crowds are coming. And the ministry will fight the altar and pray for 